Chapter 20 Pramaya Abhideya Vaidhi Sadhan Bhakti Brajanath and Vijay Kumar returned to Brajanath's home before noon. Brajanath's mother was waiting for them and lovingly served them sumptuous prasadam. On completion of the meal, uncle and nephew had affectionate discussions, and Brajanath gradually explained to his respected maternal uncle all the instructions that he had previously heard from Babaji Maharaj. When Vijay Kumar heard these nectarian instructions, he became blissful and said, You are most fortunate. Sat Sangha is obtained only by great fortune. You have obtained the very rare association of a great saint like Babaji Mahasai, and he has given you substantial instructions about the highest goal of life, Paramata. One who hears Bhakti Kata and Hari Kata certainly attains good fortune and well-being. But if these topics are heard from the mouth of a great personality, then good fortune comes especially quickly. You are learned in all the Shastras, and your scholarship in Nyaya Shastra is especially unparalleled. You were born in a Vedic Brahmana family, and are not without wealth. All these opulences now appear as your ornaments. The reason for this is that you have taken shelter of the lotus feet of Vaishnavas and acquired a taste for Sri Krishna's Lila Kata. As they discussed the supreme goal of life in this way, Brajanath's mother entered and said to Vijay Kumar, Brother, it is so long since you were here. Please encourage Brajanath to become a Grihasta, householder. From his behavior, I am afraid that he may become some kind of sadhu. Several people have come with proposals for marriage, but he has taken a vow not to get married. My mother-in-law has also endeavored in this regard, but he was not convinced. After listening to his sister, Vijay Kumar replied, I will stay here for about fifteen days and reflect carefully on this matter and then inform you of my decision. Now please go inside the house. Brajanath's mother left and Vijay Kumar and Brajanath again engaged in talks about the supreme goal of life. The whole day passed like this. The following day, when they had taken their meal, Vijay Kumar said, Brajanath, this evening let us go to Srivasanga and hear from Babaji Maharaj the explanations of the sixty-four Angas of Bhakti given by Sri Rupa Goswami. Hey, Brajanath, may I achieve association like yours birth after birth? Now, Babaji Mahashai has described two paths of sadhan bhakti, Vaidimag and Ragmag. Frankly speaking, we are actually qualified for Vaidhi Dharma. Thus we should understand Vaidimag thoroughly and begin to practice sadhan before hearing instructions on Ragmag. During his last talk, Srila Babaji Maharaj gave us instructions about the ninefold Navada process of bhakti. However, I do not understand how I should begin Navada bhakti. Today we should understand this subject more deeply. As they continued on in this way, it became evening. The sun's rays had left the earth and were playing with the high branches of the trees. Vijay Kumar and Brajanath left home and arrived at Shiva Sangan again. There they offered their Dandavat Pranam to the assembled Vaishnavas and then entered the elderly Babaji's Kutia. Seeing how eager the Bhaktas were to learn, Babaji became very pleased. With great love he embraced them and offered them each an asana. They both offered their Dandavat Pranam to Babaji Mahashai's feet and sat down. After they had chatted for a short time, Vijay Kumar said, Prabhu, we are certainly giving you much trouble. However, you mercifully accept it because of your affection for the bhaktas. Today we would like to hear from you about the sixty-four different angas of bhakti that Sri Rupa Goswami has described. If you think that we are qualified, kindly tell us so that we can easily realize Shuddha Bhakti. Babaji smiled and said, First listen attentively. I will recite the sixty-four angas of bhakti as described by Sri Rupa Goswami, the first ten of which are the basic preliminary angas. 1. Taking shelter of the lotus feet of Sri Guru, Guru Padashraya. 2. Taking initiation and instructions from Sri Guru, Guru Diksha and Shiksha. 3. Serving Sri Guru with faith, 
Vishvasa Purvaka Guru Seva. 4. Following the path outlined by sadhus. 5. Inquiring about sad dharma or the procedures of bhajan. 6. Renouncing all enjoyment of sense objects for Krishna's sake. 7. Residing in dams like Dwarka and near to holy rivers like the Ganga and Jamuna. 8. Accepting only as much money and other facilities as are required to sustain one's life. 9. Respecting Ekadashi, Janmastami, and other days related to Hari. 10. Offering respects to the Ashvata, Amlaki, and other sacred trees. The next ten Angas take the form of prohibitions. 11. Abandoning all association of those who are averse to Krishna. 12. Not accepting unqualified people as disciples. 13. Renouncing pretentious endeavors such as pompous festivals, etc. 14. Refraining from reading and reciting many books and making novel interpretations of Shastra. 15. Avoiding miserly behavior in practical dealings. 16. Not being influenced by emotions such as lamentation. 17. Not disrespecting or blaspheming the devatas. 18. Not harassing any jiva. 19. Abandoning fully offenses in seva, seva aparad, and in the chanting of Sri Harinam, Nam aparad. 20. Not tolerating blasphemy of Bhagavan and his bhaktas. You should understand these twenty angas to be the entrance to the temple of bhakti, and the first three, taking shelter of the lotus feet of Sri Guru, taking diksha and shiksha from Guru, and serving him with faith, are the main activities. After this are the following. 21. Adopting the outward signs, such as tilak, of a Vaishnava. 22. Wearing the syllables of Sri Harinam on one's body. 23. Accepting the remnants of garments, garlands, and so on, that have been offered to the deity. 24. Dancing in front of the deity. 25. Offering Dandavat Pranam to Sri Guru, Vaishnavas, and Bhagavan. 26. Respectfully rising from one's seat on having darshan of Hari, Guru, and Vaishnavas, and greeting them. 27. Following the deity in procession. 28. Visiting the temples of Sri Bhagavan. 29. Circumambulation, Parikram of the temple. 30. Performing deity worship, Puja and Archan. 31. Serving Sri Krishna like a king, Paricharya. 32. Singing. 33. Performing congregational chanting of Sri Krishna's Nam, Nam Sankirtan. 34. Performing japa of the Gayatri Mantras at the Three Sandhyas after first performing Archaman. 35. Offering submissive prayers or entreaties. 36. Reciting bhajans or mantras in praise of Sri Krishna. 37. Relishing Bhagavat Prasad. 38. Drinking Sri Charinamrita, the nectar that has washed Sri Krishna's lotus feet. 39. Smelling the fragrance of incense, garlands, and so on that have been offered to Sri Krishna. 40. Touching the deity. 41. Viewing Darshan Sri Murti with devotion. 42. Having Darshan of Arti and festivals, etc. 43. Hearing about the names, forms, qualities, pastimes, etc. of Sri Hari. 44. Always anticipating Krishna's mercy. 45. Contemplating, smaranam, Sri Krishna's name, form, qualities, and pastimes. 46. Meditation. 47. Servitorship. 48. Friendship. 49. Self-surrender, Atma Samarpana. 50. Offering one's own very dear items to Krishna. 51. Incessantly performing activities for Krishna's pleasure. 52. Full surrender, Sharanagati, unto Sri Krishna's lotus feet. 53. Serving Tulsi Devi. 54. 
respecting Srimad Bhagavatam and other Bhakti Shastras. 55. Hearing and singing the glories of Sri Hari's Dham and his appearance places, such as Mathura, and circumambulating them. 56. Serving the Vaishnavas. 57. Celebrating festivals related to Sri Krishna in gatherings of sadhus according to one's means. 58. Observing the vow of Chatumasya and especially Niyamaseva in the month of Kartik. 59. Celebrating the festival of Sri Krishna's appearance day. 60. Shraddhaya Sri Murti Sevana, serving the deity with faith. 61. Bhagavat Shravana, relishing the meaning of Srimad Bhagavatam in association with Rasik Vaishnavas. 62. Sadhu Sangha, associating with bhaktas who are of the same mood, affectionate, and more advanced than oneself. Svajatiya Susnigda Sadhu Sangha. 63. Nam Sankirtan. Loud congregational chanting of Sri Krishna's Nam. And 64. Maturavas, residing in dams like Mathura and Vrindavan. Although the last five Angas have been described at the end, they are nonetheless the most important. They are also referred to as Panchanga Bhakti, fivefold devotional service. All these Angas are to be followed with body, senses, and the inner faculty mind, heart, and soul, in the worship of Krishna. Vijay, Prabhu, please give us some detailed instructions regarding Sri Guru Padashraya. Babaji, when the disciple has become qualified for undivided Krishna Bhakti, he should take shelter at the feet of Sri Guru, and by coming close to the qualified Guru, he will learn Krishna Tattva. The jiva becomes qualified for Krishna Bhakti, only when he is faithful. By the influence of pious activities, Sukriti, performed in previous births, he hears Harikata from the mouths of sadhus, and a strong faith in Krishna arises in him. This is called Shraddha. Together with Shraddha, the mood of taking shelter, Sharanagati, also appears to some extent. Shraddha and Sharanagati are almost the same tattva. The disciple is qualified for undivided, Ananya Bhakti, if he has developed the strong faith. Krishna Bhakti is certainly the best and highest attainment in this world. Thus I will accept Krishna Bhakti as my duty, and to that end I will do whatever is favorable for it, and reject all activities that are unfavorable. Krishna is my sole protector, and I accept him as my exclusive guardian. I am very poor, wretched and destitute, and my independent desire is not beneficial for me. Thus following Krishna's desire exclusively is beneficial for me in all ways. When the jiva attains that qualification, he becomes anxious to hear instructions on bhakti and accepts shelter at the lotus feet of the sadguru. That is to say, he becomes his disciple and accepts instructions, shiksha, on bhakti. Tad vigyarnartam Sa gurum eva bigachet, samit panishrotyam brahmanishtam. Mundaka Upanishad 1 2 12. In order to obtain knowledge of that Bhagavad Vastu, the absolute truth concerning Sri Bhagavan, one should approach Sadguru, carrying firewood for sacrifice. The qualification of Sadguru is that he is well versed in the Vedas, absorbed in the absolute truth, Brahmagyan and devoted to the service of Bhagavan. Acharyavan Purusho Veda Chandogya Upanishad 6.14.2 He who takes shelter of Sadguru comes to know that Parabrahma. The qualities of a Sadguru, bona fide guru, and the Sat Shishya, bona fide disciple, are given in detail in the Sri Hari Bhakti Vilas 1.23.64 the essence is that only a person with pure character and shraddha is qualified to become a shishya, and only that person who is endowed with shuddha bhakti, who knows bhakti tattva, and is of spotless character, simple, without greed, free from mayavad philosophy, and expert in all devotional activities, is qualified as sadguru. A brahmana adorned with these qualities 
and who is honored by the whole society can be guru of all other varnas. If there is no brahmana, the disciple can accept a guru who is situated in a higher varna than himself. Apart from these considerations of varnashram, the principal consideration is that whoever knows Krishna Tattva can be accepted as guru. If a person born in one of the higher varnas, brahmana, chatriya and vaisha, finds the above-mentioned qualities present in a person born of a brahmana family and accepts him as guru, then he can get some facilities and favor in a society that respects the higher varna. Factually, though, only a worthy bhakta can be guru. The rules for testing the guru and disciple, as well as the determination of time, are given in the shastras. The purport is that the guru will bestow his mercy upon the disciple when the guru perceives the disciple to be qualified, and when the disciple has faith in the guru, understanding him to be a shuddha bhakta. There are two kinds of guru, diksha guru and shiksha guru. One has to accept diksha from the diksha guru. At the same time, one also has to take shiksha concerning archan, deity worship. There is one diksha guru, but there can be several shiksha gurus. The diksha guru is also competent to act as shiksha guru. Vijay, since the diksha guru is not to be given up, how will Gurudev give shiksha if he is not competent of giving sat shiksha? Babaji, before accepting a guru, one should examine him to see that he is expert in the tattva spoken in the Vedas and has realized paratattva. If he is, then he will certainly be capable of giving all kinds of instructions about the Absolute Truth. Normally, there is no question of giving up the Diksha Guru. There are two circumstances, however, in which he should be abandoned. First, if the disciple accepted the Guru without examining the Guru's knowledge of the Absolute Truth, his Vaishnava qualities, and his other qualifications. And second, if after initiation the Guru does not perform any function, he should be given up. Many passages in Shastra give evidence for this. Yo vyaktir nyaya rahitam anya yena shrinoti ya tav ubao narakam goram vrajatakalam akshayam Hari Bhakti Vilas 162 He who poses as an acharya but gives false instructions that are opposed to the Sattvata Shastras will reside in a terrible hell for an unlimited period of time, and so will the misguided disciple who mistakenly listens to such a false guru. Gororapya valiptasya Karya karyam ajanata Utpata pratipanasya Parityago vidhiyate Mahabharat Udyoga Parava 179.25 And Narad Pancharatara one ten twenty. It is one's duty to give up a guru who cannot teach the disciple what he should do and what he should not do, and who takes the wrong path either because of bad association or because he is opposed to Vaishnavas. A Vaishnava Upadishtena Mantrena Nirayam Vrajet Punas Cha Vidhina Samyag Grahayed Vaishnavad Guru Hari Bhakti Vilas 4, 1, 44. One goes to hell if he accepts mantras from an Avaishnava guru, that is, one who is associating with women and who is devoid of Krishna Bhakti. Therefore, according to the rules of Shastra, one should take mantras again from a Vaishnava guru. The second circumstance in which one may reject the guru is if he was a Vaishnava who knew the spiritual truth and principles when the disciple accepted him, but who later became a Mayavadi, or an enemy of the Vaishnavas, by the influence of Asat Sangha. It is one's duty to give up such a guru. However, it is not proper to give up a guru whose knowledge is meagre, if he is not a Mayavadi, or an enemy of the Vaishnavas, and is not attached to sinful activity. In that case, one should still respect him as a guru, and with his permission, one should go to another Vaishnava who is more knowledgeable and serve that Vaishnava and take instructions from him. Vijay, please tell us about Krishna Diksha and Shiksha. Babaji, 
one should accept shiksha about the process of archan, deity worship, and pure devotional service from Sri Gurudev, and one should then perform Krishna Seva and Krishna Anushilanam with a simple mood. We will consider the Angas of Archan in more detail later. It is essential to take shiksha from Sri Gurudev regarding Sambandha Gyan, one's relationship with Krishna, Abhideya Gyan, the process of devotional service, and Prayojan Gyan, the ultimate goal. Vijay, what does it mean to perform Guru Seva with faith? Babaji, one should not consider Sri Gurudev to be a mortal or an ordinary jiva. Rather, one should understand him to be a representative of all the devatas, Sarva Deva Maya. One should never disobey him, and one should always know him to be Vaikuntha Tattva. Vijay, what does it mean to follow the path of the sadhus? Babaji, sadhan bhakti may be described as the means one adopts to fix one's mind on Krishna's feet, but it is one's duty to follow the path that the previous great personalities, Mahajans, have followed, because this path is always free from misery and hard labor and is the cause of all auspiciousness. Sam re gya shreya sam he tu, panta santapa varjitaha, anavapta shramam purve, yena santa pratastire. Skanda Purana. No one person can perfectly define the course or path of devotion that one should follow, but the previous Mahajans, following each other in succession, have made this path of bhakti yoga clear and simple step by step. They have made it easy and have removed all the obstacles, great and small, so we can follow it fearlessly. Therefore, it is one's duty to depend only on that path. Even if one is performing single-pointed, undivided bhakti of Sri Hari, his bhakti can never bring any good fortune if he is violating the rules of Shruti, Shmriti, the Puranas and the Pancharatras. One should understand that such unauthorized bhakti will only be the cause of confusion and disaster. Shruti Smriti Purana Di Pancharatra Vidim Vina Aikanti Ki Hare Bhaktiya Utpatayaiva Kalpate Brahma Yamala, quoted in Sri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Vijay, please tell us clearly how unauthorized Hari Bhakti can be the cause of disaster. Babaji, single-pointed and undivided consciousness in Shuddha Bhakti is only obtained by depending on the path given by the previous Mahajans. One cannot attain single-pointed consciousness if one leaves the path of the previous Mahajans and creates another path. Consequently, Dattatreya, Buddha and other teachers who were not able to understand Shuddha Bhakti accepted a shadow of this mood and propagated the very insignificant paths of Mayavad Mishra, Bhakti mixed with Mayavad, and Nashtikata Mishra, Bhakti mixed with Atheism. They designated these as single-pointed, Hari Bhakti, but in reality, the paths that they put forward are not Hari Bhakti at all. They only create immense confusion and spiritual disaster. Now, in the bhajan of spontaneous devotion, Rag Marg, there is no regard for the rules of Shruti, Shmriti, Purana, Pancharatra, and so on. The only concern the followers of this path have is to follow the inhabitants of Braja. But sadhaks who are qualified for Vidhi Marg must depend only on the path of Bhakti shown by Dhruva, Prahlad, Narad, Vyas, Sukha, and other Mahajans. That is why Vaidhi Bhaktas have no alternative but to follow the way of the sadhus. Vijay what is the meaning of being inquisitive about Sad Dharma and the procedures of Bhajan? Babaji Sad Dharma means real Dharma or the Dharma of real sadhus, and one should inquire enthusiastically to understand it. Vijay What does it mean to give up enjoyment for Krishna's sake? Babaji Material enjoyment, boga, means enjoying happiness from the pleasure of eating and so on. That boga is usually opposed to bhajan, so bhajan becomes easy when one gives up such enjoyment for the purpose of Krishna bhajan. 
A person who is attached to material enjoyment is just like a person who drinks alcohol, for he is so much attached to the objects of his senses that he is unable to perform Shuddha Bhakti. Therefore, we should not enjoy material food, rather we should only honor and serve Bhagavat Prasad. One should protect the body that we use in service, and also give up all kinds of enjoyment on Ekadashi, Janmastami, Falguni Purnima, Nishinga Chaturdasi, and similar days. Vijay, what does it mean to reside in dams such as Dwarka and places near the Ganga and other holy rivers? Babaji, faith and steadiness in Bhakti, Bhakti Nishta, arise in places where Bhagavan's blessed appearance and other pastimes took place and near pious rivers such as the Ganga and Jamuna. Vijay, thus if one resides in Sri Navadweep Dham, one becomes purified. Is the Ganga the cause of this, or is there another cause as well? Babaji, aho, one receives all the benefits of residing in Vrindavan if one resides anywhere within the sixteen kroshas of Sri Navadweep, and especially if one resides in Sri Mayapur. Ayodhya, Mathura, Maya, Kashi, Kanchi, Avantika, and Dwarka are the seven holy places that give liberation. But among them, Sri Mayapur is the most important dham. The reason is that Sri Man Mahaprabhu has caused his eternal abode, Swetadweep, to descend here. Four centuries after Sri Man Mahaprabhu's appearance, this Swetadweep will become the most important dham above all the other dhams on earth. By residing in this dham, one becomes free from all kinds of offenses and attains Shuddha Bhakti. Sri Prabodhananda Saraswati has accepted this dham as non-different from Sri Vrindavan. In fact, in some places, he has shown that it is even more glorious. Vijay, what does it mean to adopt appropriate means to sustain one's life for practicing bhakti? Babaji, it is said in the Naradiya Purana, Yabata syat svanirvaha, svikuryat tabad artavit, adi kye nyuyatayam cha, chyavate paramatataha. A wealthy person should accept as much wealth as he requires to follow the rules and rituals that sustain his bhakti. Accepting more or less than necessary is the cause of falling down, even from the highest level. One who is qualified for Vaidhi Bhakti may earn his livelihood by some proper means according to Varnashram Dharma. It is beneficial to accept wealth according to one's necessity. Accepting more than necessary results in attachment, which gradually destroys one's bhajan. It is not beneficial either to accept less than necessary, because the resultant scarcity will also weaken one's bhajan. Therefore, as long as one is not qualified for complete detachment, near a peksh, one should accept wealth and so forth to maintain one's life and to follow Shuddha Bhakti. Vijay How does one observe Hari Varsha? Babaji The term Hari Varsha refers to pure or unbroken Shuddha Ekadashi. Mixed Vida Ekadashi must be given up. In cases where Dwadasi is Mahadwadasi, Dwadasi should be observed instead of Ekadashi. One should observe celibacy on the previous day and then spend the day of Hari Varsha fasting without taking water. One should stay awake the whole night, incessantly engaged in bhajan, and on the next day one should observe celibacy and break the fast at the proper time. This is proper observance of Hari Varsha. It is not possible to observe nirjal fasting, that is fasting without drinking water, without giving up Mahaprasad. If one does not have the ability or strength to observe Harivarsha properly, there is provision for alternative arrangements, anukalpa. According to Hari Bhakti Vilas, a representative may fast on one's behalf. Upava set vashaktasya, ahitagnir atapi va, putran va karayed anyan, brahmanan vapikarayet. Hari Bhakti Vilas. 1234. If a Sagnika Brahmana is unable to fast, 
he may arrange for brahmanas or his sons to fast on his behalf. The method of fasting through Havisyan and so on is described as follows. Naktam Havisyana manodanam va, falam tilakchiram atambu chayam, yat panchagavyam yadivapi vayu, prashastam atrotaram uttaran cha. Vayu Purana, quoted in Hari Bhakti Vilas, 12.39. In the evening, instead of grains, one should take other foodstuffs, havisyana, such as fruits, sesame, milk, water, ghee, panchagavya, and air. In this list, each item is better than the one before. According to Mahabharat, Udogya Parva, Astaitanya Vritagani, Apo Mulam Falam Payaha, Havya Brahmana Kamya Cha, Guror Varchanam Ausadam. The following eight items do not destroy one's brata, vow. Water, roots, fruits, milk, ghee, the desire of a Brahmana, the words of the Guru, and herbs and medicines. Vijay, how does one offer respects to trees such as the Ashvata and Amalaki? Babaji, Ashvata Tulasi Datri, Go Bhumi Sura Vaishnavaha, Pujita Pranata Jyata, Chapayanti Nirnam Agam, Skanda Purana. All of one's sins are destroyed if one remembers to perform puja and offers obeisances to the Amalaki and Pipala trees, Tulsi, the cows, Brahmanas and Vaishnavas. One who is qualified for Vaidhi Bhakti must maintain his journey in life while staying in this world. To do this, he is obliged to worship, meditate on, take care of, and offer obeisances to useful and shade-giving trees such as Pipla, to fruit-bearing trees such as the Amalaki, to worshipable trees such as Tulsi, to cows and other useful animals, to Brahmanas who protect society by giving instructions on Dharma, and to Vaishnavas. The Vaidhi Bhaktas protect the world by performing these activities. Vijay, please tell us in detail about giving up the association of people who are averse to Krishna. Babaji, when Bhav appears, Bhakti becomes very strong and deep, but so long as Bhav has not risen, it is necessary to give up the association of people who are opposed to Bhakti. The word Sangha, association, indicates attachment. Sangha does not just mean being near other people and holding conversations with them. Sangha takes place when there is attachment in that proximity and conversation. It is quite wrong to associate with people who are averse to Bhagavan. After Bhav has arisen, one never has any desire to associate with such people. Consequently, those with the Adhika for Vaidhi Bhakti should always stay away from such association. The creeper of Bhakti, Bhakti Lata, becomes dried up by aversion to Krishna, just as polluted air and too much heat destroy trees and plants. Vijay, who are those people who are averse to Krishna? Babaji, there are four kinds of people who are averse to Krishna. Those who are devoid of Krishna Bhakti and are attached to sense enjoyment, Vishayi. Those who are attached to associating with women, Stri Sangi. Those whose hearts are polluted by Mayavad philosophy and atheism. And those who are entangled in karma. One must give up the association of these four kinds of people. Vijay, what should we know about not accepting unqualified people as disciples? Babaji, it is a great fault to accept many disciples in order to gain wealth. To make many disciples, one must also accept those who do not have Shraddha, but it is an offense to accept unfaithful people as disciples. Only those who have Shraddha are qualified to be disciples. Others are not. Vijay, what is the significance of giving up pretentious efforts in arranging festivals and so on? Babaji, briefly, one must perform Bhagavad Bhajan 
and maintain one's life at the same time. If one engages in extensive material activities, he becomes so attached to them that he cannot fix his mind in bhajan. Vijay, what about giving up studying, teaching, and interpreting various kinds of books? Babaji, the shastras are just like the ocean. It is good to study with discrimination books on the subject in which we require to take instruction, but we will not get full knowledge on any subject by reading fragments of numerous books. Especially, intelligence related to Sambandha Tattva will not arise if one does not fix his mind in studying attentively the Bhakti Shastras. Be careful to take only the direct meaning of the Shastras, for indirect interpretation, speculation, leads to the opposite conclusion. Vijay, what does it mean to give up miserly behavior? Babaji, we must collect suitable items for food and shelter during our sojourn in this life. There is difficulty if we fail to obtain these items, and also if we obtain them and then lose them again. Therefore we should not be perturbed when such miseries occur. Instead we should keep remembrance of Bhagavan within our minds. Vijay, how can one be saved from lamentation, anger, etc.? Babaji, if one's consciousness is full of sorrow, fear, anger, greed and madness, Sri Krishna's spurti, manifestation, will not appear. It is natural to feel sorrow and illusion when one is separated from friends or when obstacles prevent us from fulfilling our desires, but it is not proper to remain under the sway of this sorrow and illusion. One will certainly feel separation when separated from a son, but one must remove this sorrow through remembrance of Sri Hari. In this way, one should practice fixing the mind on Sri Bhagavan's lotus feet. Vijay, you have said that one should not disrespect the Devatas. Does that mean that we should perform their puja? Babaji, we must have undeviated bhakti towards Sri Krishna, who is the root Devata of all the Devas. One should not worship any other Devata, thinking them to be independent of Sri Krishna. At the same time, one should not be disrespectful to others who offer puja to these devatas. One should respect the devatas, understanding them all to be servants of Sri Krishna, but one should always only remember Krishna. Undeviating bhakti will not arise in the jiva's heart until it is free from material qualities. One whose consciousness is covered by the gunas Sattva, Raja and Tama will perform puja of the devata of the particular guna by which he is influenced and he will have a particular faith, Nishta, according to his qualification. Therefore, one should be respectful towards the worshipable devatas of different persons. By the mercy of these devatas, the consciousness of those worshippers will gradually become free from material qualities. Vijay Please explain about not giving anxiety to other living entities. Babaji Sri Krishna is very quickly satisfied with one who maintains a compassionate mood towards other jivas and who does not give them any kind of anxiety through his body, mind and words. Compassion is the main dharma of the Vaishnavas. Vijay How does one abandon offenses in seva, seva aparad, and enchanting Sri Hari Nam, Nam Aparad. Babaji, one must very carefully give up the Seva Aparads in deity worship, Archan, and Nam Aparad in general Bhakti. There are 32 kinds of Seva Aparad, including entering the temple wearing shoes or sitting in a palanquin. And there are 10 kinds of Nam Aparad, including blaspheming saints and disrespecting Sri Guru one must certainly abandon these two categories of apparats. Vijay, you have said that we should not tolerate hearing blasphemy of Bhagavan and his bhaktas. Does that mean that we should fight with the blasphemer? Babaji, those who blaspheme Sri Krishna and the Vaishnavas are opposed to Sri Krishna and their association should be given up in any possible way. Vijay, you mentioned that these twenty angas of bhakti are especially significant. 
What is their connection with the other Angas? Babaji, the remaining 44 Angas are included within the 20 Angas that I have just described. They have been presented as different Angas in order to explain them in detail. The 30 Angas from item 21, accepting the symbols of a Vaishnava, to item 50, offering one's dearest possessions to Krishna, are included in the path of deity worship, Archan. 21. Accepting the symbols of a Vaishnava means wearing a necklace of tulsi beads around the neck and applying tilak on twelve parts of the body. 22. Wearing the letters of Sri Krishna Nam means writing the names Hare Krishna or the names of the Panchatattva on the main parts of the body with sandalwood pulp, Chandan. 23. Srimad Bhagavatam 11.6.46 recommends that we accept the deity's remnants, Nimalya. Tvayo pabukta shrag ganda vasolankara charchitaha uchista bo jino dasas tavamayam jaye mahi Wearing the remnants of garlands, sandalwood paste, chandan, clothes and jewelry that you have worn and taking the remnants of your food we, your servants, will certainly be victorious over your maya. 24. Dancing before the deity of Krishna. 25. Offering prostrated obeisances, Dandavat Pranam. 26. Standing up when one sees Sri Vigraha coming. 27. Following behind the deity in procession. 28. Going into the temple of Krishna. 29. Parikram means to circumambulate the deities at least three times, keeping them on one's right side. 30. Archan means performing worship, puja of the deity, Sri Murti, with different articles. 31. Paricharya means performing seva for Sri Krishna, just as for a king. Paricharya to seva pa, karanadi parishkriya. Tata prakir naka chatra vadit radye upasana Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1261 This paricharya is of two kinds. One is to clean the paraphernalia and to perform worship, and the other is to perform seva with a chamara, to hold an umbrella, to play musical instruments, and so forth. There is no need to explain the next few angas separately in any detail. 32. Singing. 33. Congregational chanting of Sri Harinam. 34. Humbly expressing one's mind in words. 35. Chanting japa and mantras with archaman three times a day. 36. Reciting shlokas that glorify Sri Krishna. 37. Accepting and respecting foodstuffs offered to Sri Krishna. 38. Tasting with devotion the water that has bathed Sri Krishna's lotus feet. 39. Relishing the fragrance of incense and garlands that have been offered to Sri Krishna. 40. Taking darshan of Sri Murti. 41. Touching Sri Murti. 42. Seeing the performance of the Arti ceremony. 43. Hearing the glories of Sri Krishna's Nam, Rup, Guna, Lila, and Kata. 44. Experiencing Sri Krishna's mercy everywhere and in all circumstances. 45. Contemplating Sri Krishna's Nam, Rup, Guna and Lila within the mind. 46. Thoroughly meditating on Sri Krishna's Nam, Rup, Guna and Lila and offering service in the mind, Manasi Seva. These few Angas are quite clear. 47. There are two kinds of servitorship, dasyam, offering the results of one's activities and being a servant. 48. There are two kinds of sakyam, that which is based on faith, vishvasa, and that which is based on an attitude of friendship, maitri. 49. The significance of the word atmanivedanam comes from the word atma, from this come the two principles of egoism of the embodied soul, namely, attachment to the Dehi, possessor of the body, in the form of a hunter, Inus, and attachment to the Deha, body, in the form of Mamata, 
minus. Atmanivedanam means to offer these two principles to Sri Krishna. Vijay, will you please explain these two terms more clearly? The egoism of the embodied jiva, dehi nishta ahanta, an attachment to the body and to things connected to the body, deha nishta mamata. Babaji, the jiva within the body is called dehi, embodied, or aham, self. Acting with the false consciousness of I is called Dehi Nishta Ahamta, the egoism of the embodied jiva, and the consciousness of possessing the body or things that are related to the body is called Deha Nishta Mamata, attachment to things connected with the body. These two principles of I and mine are both to be offered to Sri Krishna. Atmanivedanam means to relinquish the consciousness of I and mine and to take care of the body with the consciousness, I am Krishna's servant, I take Krishna's prasad, and I use this body in Krishna's service. Vijay, how should we offer to Krishna things that are dear to us? Babaji, when we accept the things of this world that are very pleasing to us, we should first offer them to Krishna. This is what Srila Rupa Goswami means by offering the dearmost things to Krishna. Vijay, how should we perform all endeavors for Krishna's sake? Babaji, performing all endeavors for Sri Krishna's sake means that one should perform all material activities and all activities in regulated devotional service that are favorable for service to Sri Krishna, Hari Seva. Vijay, how can one accept shelter in every way? Babaji, taking full shelter, Sharanagati, means to express the mood O Bhagavan, I am yours. Hey Bhagavan, tavaivas me. And, O Bhagavan, I am taking shelter of you. Hey Radhe, hey Krishna, tavaivas me. In the mind and out loud. Vijay, how does one perform service to Tulsi, Tulsi Seva? Babaji, there are nine ways of performing Tulsi Seva. Having darshan of Tulsi, touching Tulsi, remembering Tulsi, performing kirtan of Tulsi, offering obeisances to Tulsi, hearing the glories and pastimes of Tulsi, planting Tulsi, looking after Tulsi, and performing regular daily worship, Nitya Puja of Tulsi. Vijay, how should one respect the Shastras? Babaji, the Shastras that establish Bhagavad Bhakti are the real Shastras. Srimad Bhagavatam is the best of all these Shastras because it is the essence of all Vedanta. Those who taste its nectarian mellows have no taste for any other Shastra. Vijay, what are the glories of Krishna's birthplace, Mathura? Babaji, all desires are fulfilled by performing the following activities in relation to Mathura. Hearing, chanting and remembering, desiring to go there, seeing, touching, residing there, and serving. You should know that Sridhar Mayapur is also of exactly the same nature as Mathura. Vijay, what is the purport of serving the Vaishnavas, Vaishnava Seva? Babaji, Vaishnavas are very dear to Bhagavan, so when we serve the Vaishnavas, we obtain bhakti towards Bhagavan. It is said in the Shastras that worshipping Sri Vishnu is greater than worshipping all the devatas, but greater than the worship of Vishnu is worshipping the Vaishnava, who is his servant, Sevak. Vijay, what is the meaning of observing festivals according to one's means? Babaji, Mahotsava really means collecting articles according to one's means and using them in Bhagavan's service and in his temple for the service of pure Vaishnavas. There is no greater festival than this in the world. Vijay, how should we respect the month of Kartik? Babaji, the month of Kartik is also called Urja. Respecting Urja means performing seva of Sri Damodar by following the angas of bhakti, such as Shravana and Kirtana, in a regulated way during this month. Vijay, how should one observe Krishna's birthday? Babaji, Sri Janma Yatra means observing the festivals of Krishna's appearance day on Krishna Astami, 
in the month of Bhadrapada, and of Mahaprabhu's appearance day on the full moon day, Purnima, of the month of Falguna. Surrendered bhaktas must certainly observe these festivals. Vijay, how should one faithfully serve and worship Sri Murti with opulence suitable for a king? Babaji, loving enthusiasm is very necessary in the service and worship of Sri Murti. Krishna gives not only the insignificant fruit of mukti, but also the great fruit of bhakti to those who perform seva puja of Sri Murti with great enthusiasm. Vijay, what does it mean to relish Srimad Bhagavatam in the association of Rasik Bhaktas? Babaji, Srimad Bhagavatam is the very sweet rasa of the desire tree of the Vedas. By associating with people averse to rasa, one will be unable to taste the rasa of Srimad Bhagavatam, and the result will be aparad. One must taste the rasa of the shlokas of Srimad Bhagavatam in the association of those who are rasagya, who are conversant with and are drinking that rasa and who are qualified for Shuddha Bhakti. Speaking or hearing Srimad Bhagavatam in general assemblies will not award pure bhakti. Vijay What is the association of bhaktas who are of the same mood, swajatiya, and affectionate, snigda? Babaji Associating with abhaktas, non-devotees, in the name of satsanga, will not bring elevation in bhakti. The goal that bhaktas desire is to obtain service in Krishna's aprakrita unmanifest lila, and one who has this desire should be known as a bhakta. Elevation in bhakti comes from associating with members of this group of bhaktas who are superior to oneself. Without this sangha, the development of bhakti stops, and one acquires the nature of the class of people with whom he has Sangha. In relation to Sangha, Hari Bhakti Sudhodaya 851 says, Yasya Yat Sangati Pumso, Mani Vatsyat Satad Guna, Svakular Dye Tato Diman, Svayutanye Vasam Shrayat. Just as a jewel reflects the colors of objects around it, Similarly, a person's nature becomes like that of those with whom he associates. Therefore, one only becomes a pure sadhu by the association of pure sadhus. Sadhu Sangha, the association of advanced bhaktas, is beneficial in every way. Where Shastra gives advice that we should be free from mundane companionship, the purport is that we should associate with sadhus. Vijay what is meant by Nam Sankirtan? Babaji Nam is Aprakrita Chaitanya Ras, a transcendental living mellow, and within Nam there is not any scent of mundane consciousness. When the devoted Jiva becomes purified through Bhakti and renders service to Sri Hari Nam, Sri Nam personally manifests on his tongue. Nam cannot be accepted with material senses. This is how one should incessantly perform Nam Sankirtan, either alone or with others. Vijay, by your mercy, we have already understood something about Mathura Vas, living in Krishna's birthplace, Mathura. Now, please explain the essence of these instructions. Babaji, amongst the sixty-four Angas, these last five are the most exalted. If one establishes even a slight connection with them, and keeps aloof from offences, then the state of Bhav will arise by their unlimited wonderful influence. Vijay Kindly tell us if there is something more that we should know in relation to this process. Babaji The Shastras sometimes describe some intermediate fruits of these Angas of Bhakti in order to create taste for Bhajan in those who are extroverted and impious. However, the main fruit of all these angas is to develop attachment to Krishna. All the activities of one who is knowledgeable and expert in bhakti must be within the angas of bhakti and not within the angas of karma. The practice of knowledge, jnana, and renunciation, vairagya, may sometimes assist somebody to enter within the temple of bhakti, 
but gyan and vairagya are not angas of bhakti because they make the heart hard whereas bhakti is very soft and tender by nature bhaktas accept the gyan and vairagya that manifest of their own accord through the practice of bhakti but gyan and vairagya cannot be the cause of bhakti and bhakti easily awards results that knowledge and renunciation cannot give sadhan bhakti gives rise to such taste for hari bhajan that even very strong attachment to sense objects decreases and vanishes the sadhak must always practice yukta vairagya and always stay away from the spirit of deceitful renunciation falgu vairagya yukta vairagya means to accept all paraphernalia according to need and in a detached mood knowing it to be related to krishna if things are actually related to shri hari it is artificial to renounce them as worldly because of greed for mukti this is called falgu vairagya therefore adhyatmika gyan and falgu vairagya should be given up sometimes bhakti is displayed to acquire wealth disciples and so on but this is far from pure bhakti in fact such a show of bhakti is not actually an anger of bhakti at all discrimination vivek and other qualities are also not angas of bhakti they are qualities of the practitioner of bhakti similarly yama niyama good conduct cleanliness and so on are naturally present in people who are favorable towards krishna so they are also not angas of bhakti qualities such as inward and outward purity austerity and sense control take shelter of krishna's bhaktas of their own accord the bhaktas do not have to endeavor for them separately some of the angas of bhakti that i have mentioned are principal angas and one will attain perfection by firmly performing sadhan of any of these principal angas or of several of them i have explained everything about vaidhi sadhan bhakti in a very brief way now you should understand this clearly take it to heart and practice it with full force when brajanath and vijay kumar heard these instructions from babaji they offered satsang dandavat pranam and said prabhu please deliver us we are trapped in the deep trench of pride babaji mahashay replied certainly krishna will bestow his mercy upon you that night uncle and nephew returned home very late thus ends the 20th chapter of jiva dharma entitled prameya abhideya vaidhi sadhan bhakti